this talk is about how to find lots of bugs in real code, making compilers aggressive and specific. So it's, this is a talk of mostly gives to build static tools, and the theory is if uh, I tell you how to build it, you'll understand pretty well what's going on. Um, on the other hand, it's distilling down about seven years of research, so at some point it might be a bit too high level. So if you think I'm saying anything that's confusing or bullshit, you should just type in your question, and we'll clarify things, hopefully. So just as a one slide of bio, so my academic lineage, uh, I got my PhD from MIT um, operating system. So we were primarily in the bug generation business, um, where the me method of generation of choice was you'd screw up something in the OS, um, it would crash, all the lights, LED lights would flip on red, you'd try to figure out what to do yet again. Um, so this is, this is pretty hard. So the last seven years or so at Stanford, we've been developing techniques to find as many serious bugs as possible in large software systems. Um, and if you look at my case logs, I might come across as an ivory tower academic. Um, on the other hand, the stuff we've developed has always been targeted at real code. We don't have a lot of patience for things that don't work. Very well, only work on toy programs or only work for uh, fun bugs that no one really cares about. So all the research that I'll talk about in this talk, um, a lot of it is actually made in the real world, both in the context of Coverity and in, in other, uh, other companies and other, other projects. So our research actually is, we're pretty agnostic um, in terms of what, how we find bugs. We just care about stuff that works. Um, so primarily we've done three different types of things. So one is we've taken model checking, which is a formal methods technique, and applied it to storage systems. So this finds place where your, your RAID system self-emulates if it crashes in the wrong place, or your file system destroys the root partition. Um, more recently, we've been generating um, test cases automatically using uh, symbolic execution. So what this does is just, it's going to generate, it's going to run in your code on uh, inputs that could be anything, track when a bug could happen, generate a concrete input that you can see back in. So this generates, say, packets of death or inputs of death. It will just blow up the code automatically. And what this, the thing we've been working on the longest is system-specific static analysis. So that's what this talk is primarily about. Um, and the game here is you take a compiler, you extend it with as many things as you can about the system um, you want to check, and then you unleash it, and it goes and it finds a lot of bugs. And while I like thinking about the first two approaches a lot, um, unfortunately, from a research perspective, the static analysis stuff by far is, is, is way easier to use. You just, you just shove code through, and it takes a couple hours. And it's, it always finds lots of errors. Um, usually, there's several zeros extra after the bug counts compared to the others. So this, this talk will focus on, on primarily this technique. So the, the one slide intuition. Um, so the, the game you want to play is if you rip up in a big software system, you have a lot of ad hoc restrictions. So you have things like don't use floating point in the kernel, always acquire a lock, that will be for accessing shared variable x. If you get input from the user, you have to vet it before you use it. If you disable an option, you better re-enable re them. And the good thing about these rules is that they're pretty simple. They're little sentence clauses. You can just rattle off a bunch of them in a couple minutes. Um, the bad thing is that everybody has to obey them all the time, and a single error can crash your system, um, which is usually bad. So the question is, how do you find these things? And the corners, the one of the cornerstone observations that applies to our static tools and to all other static tools is that these rules map pretty clearly to source code constructs. And because of this, you can check them with the compiler automatically. So the way you do it is pretty straightforward. You just scan the source for relevant actions, and you check that they're correct. So for instance, the check that if you disable interrupts, they get re-enabled, you'll scan through the source code. Anytime you see a call to a disable interrupt function, you'll scan all the paths after that, and every path should terminate with or um, eventually hit an, a re-enable interrupt function call. If it, if, if it does, it's a good path. So you're happy. If it doesn't, you know that path is bad, and you admit an error message. Um, so the main problem is that compilers have a lot of machinery to check this, these kind of rules. Um, the compiler guys, after the, over the past few decades, have pretty effective techniques for ripping apart source code, getting fairly deep semantic knowledge of what, what's going on in it. Um, but unfortunately, compilers are pretty stupid. They have no idea about interrupts. They don't even understand malloc and free, lock and unlock, even very simple things like that. And they certainly don't understand the system specific types of rules that you might have in your, in, your, in your code. On the other hand, you as a system designer have a lot of knowledge about what must always be done or never be done, um, but you don't have any machinery. So what you're 
reduced to is writing documents, uh, maybe writing comments, walking over source code, or yelling at people. Um, neither skills very well if a million lines of code. So this talk um, is how to how to solve this problem, and unsurprisingly, we just combine them. And the way we do this is you take static analysis and you make it so it can be um, heavily optimized to be extended by system designers or, or implementers. And the way you do this is you just give them a framework so they you can write uh, very simple system-specific compiler extensions that get linked in the compiler and then run over your source code. So a galactic view of what that looks like. Um, the way we, we do it, um, there's other alternatives that make sense as well, um, is we punched a hole in the side of the EVGC compiler. Um, you write a little a little checker, it's dynamically linked into the C compiler into the compiler. Um, and it gets applied on all paths in your source code, so it's flow sensitive. Um, it's not like grep where it just walks blindly over the source code. And it gets, it goes across all procedures, so it's interprocedural. Um, and it happens at compile time. So you're not running test cases, you're not running the code, you're just shoving the code through the compiler and it spits out bugs. So as an example, if we want to check that if you disable interrupts, you re enable them. You write a little extension, get linked into EEG, and if we shove the code on the left-hand side through it, so this is an actual code snippet from um, Linux RAID 5 drivers. Oh, and sorry, there's one question um, which should keep coming. Uh, what, what other companies are using your research? Um, there's a few other companies in the space. Um, there's also a lot of research. Um, that's going on Berkeley, Stanford, MIT, a bunch of other places. Uh, places like Clockwork or Fortify would be some of the other ones um, that are actively using at least the ideas uh, attributed or not um, that, that we've developed over a while. So to uh, we have another question. Couldn't you check for disable, re-enable consistency by inspecting the application call graph? Um, you're exactly right. This is essentially what the compiler is doing. Um, all your t so it's going to rip out the call graph for you, figure out which paths are possible and impossible, and you're going to tell it what to look for. Um, so if we, if we get back to this, this code example, hopefully that will be clear. Um, uh, boy, the questions are really coming. Um, so is this a beginner class? That's what this talk was on, new stack analysis methods. Um, well, the, the prefix of the talk is just to contextualize things. We're talking about the same stuff. It gets, uh, hopefully, uh, much more advanced fairly quickly. Um, if you catch up with the research in this area, um, it's going to be not as up-to-date as, as last month. Um, but for most people I talked to, it seems pretty pretty new. OK. All right, so and this, this presentation will be made available. So I'm going I'm to keep going with this slide and then uh, come back to some of these questions if they're still, if they're still open. OK, so this is, a, this is a real piece of code from, from RAID 5 in Linux. Um, and if we, sh if we push it through the, the checker, what's going to happen is there's two paths to this code. So the checker will follow both paths. The first path, it's going to come through. It's going to hit CLI, which is one of the many ways that Linux can dis disable an up. And if KMALIC succeeds, so it doesn't return null, um, you then, you're then going to hit restore flags. So at this point, uh, in apps get re-enabled, this is a good path. We're happy. We're good to go. If you follow the other path, on the other hand, things are not so pleasant. Um, so again, we would start off. We'd hit CLI, disable an up. If KMALIC fails um, and buff is null, they just return zero. So at this point, interrupts are disabled, and a few hundred thousand cycles later, so your machine's just going to lock up. And it's really not going to be clear at all why that happened. Cause you did. Oh. So when you can play this game, there's some good things that come out of it. And you can't always. So you can play it when your rules map clearly to source code constructs. So the first is it's scalable. So it handles millions of lines of code pretty easily. Once you pay the fixed cost of writing the extension, um, either you write it or someone else most likely probably rewrote it, perhaps for very. Um, it doesn't really matter if you shove 10 lines of code through or 10 million lines of code through. The incremental cost is the same. Um, besides, you just have to wait more time. You have to inspect more error reports. But you don't have to write more test cases. You don't have to do more annotations. You just shove the code through and wait a bit and then inspect errors. The second thing, which is a bit more subtle but has some real teeth in the real world, is that it's precise. Um, and it says exactly where the error was and why. And the reason this is good is if you think about it, let's, let's say we hit this bug with testing. So there's probably very few people in the building you're sitting in that could actually debug it with testing. Because what's going to happen is that the machine's going to lock up. All bugs in an OS either lead to machine lockup or crash. So inverting those causes back to the root effects, um, to the fact that we just didn't call the store flags in the right place, is really, really hard. On the other hand, the checker can spit 